Our next objective is to make life easier for future connections. So we can't constantly be dropping out of our home network and connecting specially to the Falcon Pi player network. In the previous example, the Raspberry Pi was hosting Wi-Fi. So what we want to do next is give the Falcon Pi player the credentials for your home network. Now your router is hosting it and both the laptop and the Raspberry Pi are going to connect to it. Okay. So the key advantage we get here is everyone is on the same network and if this is your home network, you don't even have to drop anything. You can directly type in the address and talk to the Pi. Primary advantage is your home router is most likely connected to the internet. So that way the Pi has accurate information about both time of day as well as location, which helps a lot when it comes to scheduling, which we'll discuss in a future show. Let's get started. Let's get our Raspberry Pi connected to the show network. For that, step one, go to status and control, hit network settings. In network settings, as you can see, there are two options, ETH0 and WLAN0. ETH0 is related to Ethernet, while WLAN0 is related to Wi-Fi. In this tutorial, we are focusing primarily on Wi-Fi since that's the most convenient. So step one, here you have to put your WPA SSID, which is your home network SSID and password. Sometimes this screen may take a little while to populate, so in case you don't see the options, just click out somewhere, scroll a little bit and click back in and you should see your options. Don't try and type out your exact network name. Once the list is populated, make sure to click the appropriate network that you want, whether it's your home network or a dedicated show network that you've created. Make sure to pick the appropriate SSID and password and hit update interface. Now that should be it in terms of basic credentials for your Raspberry Pi to connect to your home network. So what that would do is the next time the Raspberry Pi boots up, since it has credentials to connect to the network and if the network is available, it will connect to your home network. That's it. It will no longer host a hotspot. Once it's connected to your router, you can be connected to the router as well, aka your home network, and directly talk to the Raspberry Pi. You're talking through the router. But before we move on ahead, there are a couple more key settings that you need to do here. The interface mode that you see is static and DHCP. That's just the way your router would assign an IP address, whether it's on the fly or a predefined IP address. We'd ideally prefer a static IP address because we can do more with it because we always know what the IP address is. We can add other controls like turning on the projector and stuff like that. Now, before we assign an IP address, let's just look at some of our network settings. On my windows, I can go to command prompt and hit IP config. Similarly, on the Mac, I believe it's IF config. And you can see some of the basic network settings for your home network. In this case, as you can see, the default gateway is your router's IP address and the subnet mask 255, 255, 255, 0. That's usually common for pretty much most homes. So just put those two numbers in the net mask, which is our subnet mask and also the gateway. Now that you have those two values, the last one is the IP address that you want to assign this particular Raspberry Pi. For that, go back again to your command prompt and hit the command ARP-A. It will list out all the IP addresses that are present on your network. As you can see, there's a bunch of dynamic addresses followed by a few static addresses. The IP address that I'm planning to assign this particular Raspberry Pi is 192.168.0.100. As you can see, the dot one is your router. After that, it's directly 105. So I know that I have some space 100, 101. Those are IP addresses that are available. So that's the one I'm going to use. So this step is important just to make sure that no other device is using the IP address that you plan to use. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and make those updates here. I'm going to set it to 198.168.0.100. As we discussed, the subnet mask is 255, 255, 255, 0. Gateway is 0.1. That's pretty much it. Finally, the last step here is host and DNS settings. In here, give it an appropriate name. In this case, I'm just going to call it FPP master because this is the first Raspberry Pi I'm configuring and also this will be used to configure other Pis in future videos. So that's why I'm calling it master. Where it comes to DNS servers, just use the settings that I've listed below. 
One of them is my router's IP address. The other one is Google's router IP address. In my opinion, it doesn't really matter much, but that's what the manual says. Now, once you've done this and you boot up your Raspberry Pi, you should be able to connect to this Raspberry Pi using the IP address that shows up on the monitor screen. It should be the one that you assign, the 0 0.100. That's what it should say. It should no longer go back to the 8.1 that was initially used when it was acting as a hotspot. Now it's connected to your router. That's it. That's our basic network configuration. Now in the next video, I'll go over how exactly playlists are created so you can manage your shows. And also I'll go over the concept of nested playlist, which helps you handle all your future updates more efficiently.